I don't want another pretty face. I don't want just anyone at all. I don't want my dog face, yeah. I want you and your beautiful soul. You're the one I want to end. You're the one I want to own. I want another pretty face, yeah. Cause you're a beautiful, beautiful soul. Welcome back. <laughs> We got an, another week, another video diary. This one's a little different though, because listen, I know we get all cerebral and shit in these videos because honestly, that's just the, that's just the season that I'm in. But, um, I asked y'all some questions on topics that relate to things that we talk about here on these, in these video diaries. So the creative process, creativity in general, branding, work, uh, self-preservation, self-love, um, observations, epiphanies, these big kind of like life aha moments. And so we're going to get into that. Um, but first I'm Ashy. I need to handle that. First of all, I'm going to congratulate you for making it to another week. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who submitted responses on what they're doing this year to let love flow a little bit more listen i know i'm on some love and light type shit right now okay but that's let me cook spiritually happy 2024 2024 is giving i don't know i feel like 2024 is giving very much cute fun flirty and thriving it's giving believing in ourselves because that's sexy yeah do you know what else is sexy as shit acting fully in your potential you know what else turns the girls on? Being aligned with your actions and your words. Do you wanna know what else gets the girls going? Walking in your purpose? I love it when you focus on the things that are serving you. Oh, it's hot, it's hot. I know when you got such a high vibration, you know what I mean? Look at you, receptive. I like that. Yeah, you're glowing. You're glowing, and it's because you're focusing on the things that are going right in your life. And I love Oh, sorry. Got a little distracted by you, right? How would you welcome back loved ones you lost touch with or even cut off for years? How would I welcome them back? Honestly, I feel like you can't have that conversation and not talk about the shit. You, can, you gotta talk about the fallout. You have to talk about was there a resolution? Was there a moment where, what is it called? Closure. Like if you didn't have that, I feel like you need to have that. I think you need to talk about the thing or the reason why y'all fell out in the first place in order to move past it. Because if I don't know how you were genuinely feeling and I'm just going off of assumptions on what happened, then we're not able to like be intentional and honest about the, this new relationship that we have now. Beyond that, take it slow, you know, but you got to address the shit. You just have to. How does it feel to be bald? How did Jaden take it? Jaden loves it. She loves it. She loves it. And she took it. <laughs> uh, how do you deal with having a lot of choices at once? Kind of like fig tree analogy. What is a fig tree analogy? Okay, nearly every young person can relate to the fig tree, that horrible suff suffocating feeling of indecision that sense that every choice you make for the future means giving up on 10 other choices. Oh shit. Oh, I don't look at it that way. So it's probably the first thing. It's not our job to like be right, you know? Like it's just our job to direct our lives in the, di in the direction that suits us best. I think that if you're making choices that sustain you and support you now then you are setting yourself up in the future i also think about what is the thing that i value the most right now if it's my mental health then i will choose the i will make the choice that supports mental health if it's time like having more time to myself then i will make a decision that supports that need um if it's money i will make a decision that supports that need so instead of looking at it as like oh a bunch of choices that i have to make and it's life or death and this could you know make or break my future i look at it more of like like wow look at all these opportunities that i have in front of me to create the life that i want and when i put it that way it feels a little bit like less pressure but also um, it, it's the big picture it's like a reminder of the big picture that's going on it's like 
all this work shit that I'm doing now, like, yes, it's to pay my bills. And yes, it's so that I can sustain myself and pay my rent. Like that is the now reasoning for why I'm doing these things. But there's also a future reasoning in that I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be independent. I want to have growth in my businesses. Um, I want to have capital. So let me build it now so that I have more to play with later. So yeah, I think it's just um, keeping your perspective wide, feeling late in life. Mm. Mm. I get it. I don't I wouldn't say that I am of the mindset that there's it's never too late to follow your dreams. Like, while that might be true, literally, there are just more challenges depending on what your life looks like later on in life. You may have kids, you may have, you know, a demanding job at this point. Like, there's just a lot of advantages, but also disadvantages to starting early. Uh, You're an idiot (laughs) when you're young (laughs) or like you care about weird shit when you're young or you're just your priorities are not in line like there's just a lot of good and bad in both sides and I don't think that looking at it like oh I'm late or this is something that I'm starting later than I would have wanted to or I feel like I'm late in life I don't think that that presents any more challenges than starting earlier would If anything, I would just lean into the great benefits of being in that stage, being in that 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, part of your life, meaning you probably doing a little bit better in life. You might be a little bit more sane. You might be a little bit more responsible. You might be a little bit more wise. You might be more confident. Like, I think that there's a lot of wisdom and strength that comes with age and so if you lean into that and you can just kind of attack whatever it is that you're looking to do or whatever you feel like you're late in on then that is you are doing the best if you do that you know like you're giving yourself the best shot when you do it like that how would you characterize and identify good and healthy competition among creative friends versus not I think healthy, good competition just looks like support. Like, I don't think it looks like I need to be better than this person. I think it looks like I want to impress this person. I want to, like, I want to show you my tricks. Like, I think it's almost like a show and tell rather than a competition of who has the coolest thing. It's more so like, hey, look at this really cool thing. I really want to show it to you. Rather than look at this cool thing I have, it's better than your cool thing. When me and Hart were like making content together and we would do music stuff, like it looked like, it didn't look like, well, let's see who can write the best verse, but more so, bitch, I fucking ate in this verse. I have I have to do this. And just like, you know, getting feedback on like, ooh, how can I amp this up? Like it just, it just looks collaborative and, and it feels positive. I think if it doesn't feel positive and encouraging, then it's probably that bitch probably hates you. (laughs) That bitch probably don't like you. What sparked the new video diary series? These new videos feel very different, but also very you. Um, honestly, I was going through so many things and feeling so many things that I could not. Like, I felt like I needed to do this. Like, I feel like I needed to be this person in front of y'all in order for me to be who I need to be next. Like just coming up on here, cracking jokes while I'm feeling like my entire life is just being like chomped at by the bit. Like it didn't feel right. It felt try hard. It felt like I'm forcing it. Um, And also I feel like one thing that I'm noticing uh, that is if it, is it my purpose? I don't know. But one thing I'm noticing about who I am to myself and to everyone else is I'm just a light. Like I'm just a light. That's it. I'm a light. I'm a mirror. If I'm in a room, I'm a light up the room. Um, I could, I see myself always, but I also see people in ways that they don't want to be seen too. And I think that I challenge my presence challenges people's identity now that I've like accepted this about me and my like walk 
it was important for me to introduce this side of me to y'all because this is something that you've probably already got you've seen like bits of this before in me um but now that i have an awareness of it i'm such a better creative person and it was such a big identity shift for me that i had to talk about it <laughs> Because otherwise, like I would have just came on here and started talking, talking differently. And y'all would have been like, Jade's on drugs. Like I needed to show context to this shift in order for me to feel like I could continue. Um, also, I needed to like, I needed to enjoy content again. Enjoy it in a way where like, ooh, I can't wait to make that joke or I can't wait to to talk about this thing because I hadn't felt that that way about content in a long time. Um, and this was something that like I'm having all these new ideas. I'm like I'm experiencing so much change that now I have something to talk about and I just needed to get this out of my system. And the video diaries just felt like the perfect place to do that. Also, strategy. I knew that I'm I'm going to I knew that I wanted to come back to this channel in a more consistent way and I think that in the time that I was g more ghostly on this channel than not um I've always been plotting about like one thing about me as a creator when I'm gone when I'm away just know I am plotting to come back always and this video diary series also fit, it just fits so many things that I wanted to do and the strategy behind coming back to this platform in a more engaged way. New year, new you or new year, better you. Is it a new beginning or a continuation? Mm. I don't think it's either or. I feel like I am... You know, like... I feel like I've gone through a reorg. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I'm a company that has just rearranged the executives, the people at the bottom and the people in the middle. Uh, and instead of it, but instead of it being people that I'm reorganizing, it is certain efforts and the way I may be engaging in those efforts that has been reorganized. I don't think it's a new beginning. I don't think it's a continuation. I think it's a a new perspective. Someone put outgrowing old friends and spaces and being open to new places and faces. Extending compassion is always a great place to start, especially when you're dealing with wounds, uh, whether they be ones inflicted by yourself or by others. And I think that when it comes to outgrowing friends and spaces, it's just about like having compassion for you know, the, the, the previous version of yourself that, that found comfort in those spaces and that found comfort in those friends. And maybe, you know, it, it worked for that time. And then you grew up a little bit and you realize that like, oh shit, actually there was some weird stuff going on over there. But just because you have this new awareness of your past doesn't mean that you need to not trust past you. Like, past you was getting something from that honestly maybe past you wasn't getting something from that maybe you've had this awareness this whole time but isn't it so great that you have the confidence now to be able to know that you want to move into new spaces and meet people and be in new energy and be in new environments like wow like you should be proud of yourself for all the growth that's happened from then to now um but also you know give yourself time to grieve like Give yourself time to grieve, you know, our friends are our first real relationships, you know, ever. And I think that with friendships and the structure behind friendship being so very like when we were in school, most of the like most of my friendships when I was younger was fully based on convenience. We just are in the same classes. We're just in the same space. And so then, you know, we go off to college or we grow up or whatever. And we look back at that friendship and you're like, what was that? <laughs> what were, were we actually friends or were we just in the same room all the time? And so we were just friends based off of that. Like, I just think that there's a lot to think about and there's a lot to consider when you're looking at old and past relationships, because um, it's not always what we think it is, whether it be now or even back then, like back then, 
I'm sure I thought I was thick as thieves with so many people when, when in reality we were just in the same room all the time, but it is, it's not, and it's not fair for me to be like, Oh, well, Jade, you know, you're, you weren't looking out for yourself and you're just, you know, not being smart by involving yourself with those people. But it, it's just like, it, it worked at one point. Hope that helps. Someone asked, does LA feel like the end game for me? I really like living here. And it's, it's taken me a long time to be able to say that and mean it, but I do. I like LA. Despite it being expensive and dirty and everyone being li liars, you get a parking ticket for breathing too hard. I became a, an adult here. I went through my first like real shit here. I had my first real relationship here. Um, like it's just been home to so many experiences to me that I can't like... I don't know. I can't take that away from it. I can't take that away from my opinion of it. It could be the end game, but it could not. But I'm enjoying my time here while, while I'm here. What piece of advice would you give to young creatives? Strategize, ho. Whatever it is that you're doing, how does it fit into the bigger picture? Because one thing I hate for us that I'm really trying my best effort to get out of right now, a lot of other creators and creatives, we're just on these hamster wheels where we just have to keep making stuff. We have to keep making, 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 creating, creating, creating when we don't want to, when we're uninspired, when we when we don't have the capital, when we don't have any customers. Like we just have to keep making stuff and we're just on this constant wheel. And creativity doesn't always work that way. And so I think that I wish that I would have added more strategy around how I'm using all of this to build up sooner. Um, because I think I would have a little bit more leverage now, but do a five-year plan, even if it's stupid, even if it's loose, even if it's, you know, awesome to Lulu shit, like just do a little five-year plan. Like think about the next thing you want to do and then how it fits into your overall dream life, you know? Um, Cause I think that understanding how you're going to create your world just makes your world easier to create. How to brand yourself along with your build. How to brand yourself along with your build. I think it's similar to the other answer of what do you like? What do you want to make? What do you want to do? And in 10 years from now, what do all of those things look like working alongside each other? So for me, I really want to get into DJing this year. Um, I want, I just love music and I love music curation and I love talking about music. Like me and Jaden, we went to a slow jams event, which is where I got the city from. Um, we went to a slow jams event and we dissected the anti Rihanna album, which was fuck. I, I, I did not give that album enough plays. Anti is an amazing album. I could sit around and talk about women in rap for hours. I could talk about song construction for hours. I took band for like 11 years. I took lessons for 13 and I made mixtapes and I like, I just, Music has been something, music was my first ever creative anything. That was my introduction to creative, period, was music. With music being such a part of my personal story, how it relates to my to the brand, my overall goal is to be an entrepreneur and creative director. And when you're a creative director, you basically just need to kind of be able to touch multiple parts of a project, from the visuals, to the music, to the, the story, to the context, so. I think it's about just like finding all of the things that make you you um, that you want to participate in in a public way and then crafting a world where all of those fit and support each other. If a creative work does seem to present a challenge, what's your process for tackling it? Okay. I feel like I try to figure out if there's a challenge or if it's just in my head first. If I realize that the, the challenge is, ta is tangible, it's like a part of the process, I then lean on resources. I think if it's something that is completely out of my depth, I will just hire someone to do it or I will ask for help um, or lean on someone who knows how to do it better than I do. I love collaborating for that reason alone because like so many times in the creative process, you get you hit a wall, you hit these different challenges and you're like, well, damn, I guess like that's it. When really it's just like reorganize. If you aren't the person that's gonna be able to fit this need, reorganize, pick somebody else, lean on someone else, make it a collaborative effort, work with people who are just better at you than stuff. Like, 
one, it's humbling, and two, you're just better for it. I also really love to learn. I love learning. I'm trying to get a little Skillshare ad. I'm trying to get a little masterclass ad uh, in these video diaries because DJing is something that I'm gonna start working on this year. On a granular level though, start small. I'm trying to think of the last thing I did. I can't think of the last challenge I had. <laughs> I can't think of the last challenge I had, but um, I do know that like I will write out a, a bulleted list of things to do that allow me to learn to move through the challenge. So audio, audio is something I'm not well versed in, which is why half of the videos I posted on the internet have weird shit audio quality. Um, and so what I would do, I guess, in that would be like Google how to fix audio. Second thing, gather three videos. Third thing, write notes from each video, Jade. Next thing. Okay. Last question. How do you balance time spent on your relationship and time spent on your creative outlets? Just need to breathe. I just, listen, if I'm stretched, then I'm stretched. Then I let Jaden know that. Um, I also try to be intentional about time that I do spend with Jaden. So, you know, like you can also, and you can do both, you know, if you're needing to like do some computer work, you know, you can do that in the same room as my partner, or you can do that in the same room as your partner. And like, I'll do that sometimes. Like I'll be on my computer doing emails or something as we're watching a movie. Um, but I also feel like maintaining spaces for us to just be us and there isn't any other work that's overlapping is also important. The thing with balance is like, it's never 50-50, you know, it's never gonna be, the scale is gonna be exactly like this. Uh, it's, it's this, like this is the act of balancing, right? So I just communicate to Jaden. I'll sometimes I'll just be like, yo, I'm in the lab. I love to say that I'm in the lab because it's what like rappers and music producers say. And basically what I mean when I say that is I'm unavailable. Meaning I'm going to put these headphones on and I probably, you'll only see me to shit and eat. And that's about it. But I'm also just very lucky in that I have a good man like Jaden, um, who understands what I'm up against and who understands what I'm trying to do. And she gives me a lot of grace. She gives me a lot of patience. Um, she also offers me help a lot too. And that's like another way that we can kind of do two things at once, spend time together while also like helping me further my career. <laughs> and I think that that's just the balance. I think the balance is just like, sometimes it takes different forms. Sometimes it looks like us being both here and me being over here, or you being over there, whatever. Um, but just making sure that intentions are known, I think is important. And I also always keep my responsibilities top of mind too. So even if I'm working on these creative things and I'm out the house, uh, I still try to uphold the things that I'm responsible for in this relationship, such as communicating when I'm going to be out the house, checking in after it's been a few hours and I haven't, we bare, like some, I wake up earlier than Jaden does. And so sometimes like we'll go an entire day without seeing each other just because I'm up and I'm out the house. And so I'll check in, you know, around four and be like, Hey, what's up? How you doing? What you, what you, what you doing, girl? You trying to get some dinner, early dinner? Or like, yo, do you want to meet up in the middle of the day and have some lunch? So it just looks like that communicating and, and making time and real effort. With Jaden, I wouldn't, I wanted to be very upfront with her. I wanted to be very honest with her. I said, I'm trying to do a lot right now. And I feel like it's gonna look like me being over here sometimes. And me telling you this is letting you see me in this and also giving you the option of deciding if it's something that you wanna be a part of or not. I think that oftentimes that when you are chasing a creative path, you look to your people to kind of to support you in that, but you don't give them the agency to understand how they want to work in your creative life. Niggas are weird <laughs> in the entertainment, social media content world. Like there's a lot of ego and everyone thinks they're a bad bitch. And so I get it. And I think it's important to give people the option and also let people know that they have a say in how they want to engage with your creative prowess. 
And y'all, I'm going to end it on that. Also, the waves are really coming in strong. Tsunami. Whose Instagram name was Punani Tsunami? Someone's Instagram name used to be Punani Tsunami. Was that Kehlani? It was either Kehlani or Summer Walker. One of the two. Speaking of Summer Walker. Getting wiggy with it, hair replacements. If any of y'all know what that reference is from, we have found each other. We are community. All right, y'all, that's it for me. I gotta wrap it up. And I'll see y'all soon.